We've been developing cancer cell specific biological drugs that can selectively and effectively go after cancer cells. And we uncovered that cancer cells have a oral language that they only speak in the body. This allows us to exploit this language to encrypt our biological drugs in that foreign language so only cancer cells can understand us. So we're doing this extreme form of stress testing under microgravity. That is our first achievement. If we can identify at least one candidate that is resistant to leakiness in normal cells, despite being pushed to this microgravity conditions, then there's a good chance that when we go into the clinic with hundreds of different types of cancer cell ribosomes, cancer cell biomarkers, then we will be able to still rely on this asset for clinical development. Astronauts will take our cells and put them in, into back into the proper 37 degree cell culture incubator. And then with syringes, they are going to apply our reagents into the cancer cells uh, and the healthy cells. And then the next day, they are going to do the readout and uh, see whether this differential behavior is uh, recapitulated in uh, microgravity conditions. This is all about betting on the right assets for future development. Because drug development is costly and it takes time, and we're also, we're also building hope with patients. We want to identify the best candidates for them. I know it's a toilet and I get a big laugh from my friends all the time, like, oh, he's, you know, he's building a toilet. And you're like, ah, not just a toilet, you know, a titanium space toilet. So <laughs> uh, it's pretty nifty, especially when you get into the complexities of it. The UWMS is 65% smaller and 40% lighter than the current toilet used on ISS. Our toilet will be installed just adjacent to that toilet and will undergo a concurrent use with that toilet as we do the demonstration. One of the things the UWMS has to do is it actually has to inject pre-treat into the urine before it sends it to the urine processor assembly. Uh, the pre-treat is a very strong acid and it uh, is not very compatible with a lot of materials, so that forced us to have to use to a lot of exotic materials such as Inconel, Elgiloy, Titanium. So one of the coolest things that we actually did on this project is we implemented a process called Electron Beam Powder Bed Fusion. That's just a big fancy word for 3D printing. You know, when we go to the bathroom here, gravity pulls everything to the ground, essentially away from the body. Well, in microgravity, when you go into space, you, you don't have that luxury. So we have to essentially create our own artificial gravity. So at the heart of the UWMS is called is the dual fan separator. And that's actually the part that's actually made out of the 3D printed titanium. Exploration is, is a hard business. It's, it's uncomfortable. There's a lot of things that the crew has to do just to, to, to explore. And the goal with the UWMS is, is to, to meet the challenges of spaceflight in terms of mass and volume and, and power usage and, and keep within those constraints, but also make it a, a system that the crew has a, a more likelihood to be comfortable with. The objective of the experiment seems very simple and it is growing radishes on the ISS. I know that radishes have been grown uh, several times, but never in the advanced plant habitat, where we have actually enough space to grow a number of plants that allow us to do some statistics. Plant habitat is currently the largest, most complex plant growth system on the space station. The actual Growth volume itself for plants measures about 20 by 20 by 20 inches cube. So all the rest of the volume of plant habitat is all of the stuff that it takes to provide a controlled environment for the plants that are growing inside of the growth chamber. Radishes grow to a sizable volume and a big piece of that mass is the radish itself, that bulbous tissue and the process of developing the secondary tissue is completely unresearched in space. But it is relevant because it is sensitive to all these things that we have on station. So it adds to this um, rather complex set of data that we need to get a handle on to properly grow and understand the cultivation of plants in, in space. To go to Mars is a long haul. 
and to go any further than Mars is longer yet. So without a doubt, unless we are going to have space vehicles that have rotating elements that can provide some fractional gravity, uh, there's going to be a microgravity area. And in, in order to grow a reasonable amount of plants, we're talking about, a, about much larger systems. And so this experiment is, is one way of trying to get a little closer. For the past two years, we have been in uh, intensive production on a project called Space Explorers, the ISS Experience, that is filming inside and outside of the International Space Station through the uh, immersive power of virtual reality. And in a few months, we're gonna take the camera outside to uh, document a full spacewalk and to film exterior shots of the space station as well as shots of planet Earth. What we are doing now is getting ready to launch our EVA virtual reality camera, which is a slightly different system to the IVA uh, camera that we've been using for the past two years inside of the space station. We worked in collaboration with NanoRacks uh, to make it basically resistance to the pressure of space, um, the uh, extreme uh, variations in temperature, so we had to uh, make sure that the lenses were also certified for, for use outside. And we're basically going to use Dexter and the Canadarm as kind of a celestial crane, uh, as you would in, in, in the movies, uh, to shoot outside of the ISS. Beyond the ISS, of course, are a lot more places to explore. So this has really been uh, you know, invaluable knowledge to help us design future cameras that are going to go deeper into space. Once audiences experience it, I believe they will not want to go back to traditional media uh, to uh, experience space content. You know, it's, it, it, it's going to be the sort of default fast track. Space equals immersive media. And because of that, um, I think that we're going to be busy in the next few years doing more and more and more of those projects. NASA is looking for strategies to take advantage of the waste generated in the International Space Station. And one of, the way, of those uh, waste is hearing. After certain processes, the hearing can be converted to ammonia. And the ammonia can be used as a fuel, in a fuel cell. The project intends to help with the water recycling and also generate uh, electrical current. And ammonia oxidation is just one component of a process that has been developed in the lab for the several years now uh, that can be used to purify urine. This will create a system that can be used for that. This is the module, like it's open. Everything will be inside. Now it's out because I'm testing it, right? But if you see the tubings, the wires, the, the pumps, and also the this white box is the autonomous potential step. So this is more than an application for the space station. If it's efficient in the space station, it's more efficient in Earth. So, so that's sort of what we want to demonstrate, that it can work. So if you think back to the history, we started with commercial cargo to get cargo up and down to low Earth orbit. Then we moved to commercial crew to get people up and down to low Earth orbit. But we also thought that it would be key to sort of help stimulate commercial demand so that we would not be the only customer for microgravity research capability in low Earth orbit. Let's expand it and see what private industry would want to do and let them come up with these innovative ideas on how they could maybe make money and stimulate this LEO economy with ideas that they came up with. So that's what we did. We carved out a certain amount of resources, crew time and up mass to just support commercial marketing and promotion activities. We did the very first mission on a SpaceX cargo flight that, that went up there and is on space station today and Estee Lauder is coming up next. So for this particular payload, Estee Lauder has proposed to fly their advanced night repair product to the International Space Station and to photograph that in the ISS's iconic cupola.